Today we're going to take you through how to install Hass.io on a Raspberry Pi. Hass.io is a build of Home Assistant, which is an open source automation tool. It's constantly being updated and enhanced and has a large community and user base and is perfect to run on the Raspberry Pi. It allows you to bring various different technologies and automation ecosystems together and create rules such as automations and notifications. You can also integrate Home Assistant with your smart speaker, such as the Google Home, which allows you to control devices that are not normally supported by those speakers. On the screen now are some examples of some automations that I've set up for my, my Ring doorbell to turn on lights or notify me when someone is at the door. You can also see some of my devices including switches, lights and my Ring doorbell camera. I have other videos and posts showing how to add these devices, add automations and integrate with your smart speaker. For this tutorial, what you will need is a Raspberry Pi, a power supply which has sufficient power to avoid power dropout drop issues, at least an 8GB memory card. They do recommend larger, however I haven't had any issues with this size so far. You'll also need a USB memory stick if you're planning to use Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi. First of all, you'll need to select the appropriate Hasio build. Since I've got the Pi 3 Model B, I'm selecting this image. You'll also need to get some software to flash the image to your SD card. They recommend using Etcher, which I'm using in this demo. It's free and simple to use. I'll just take you through how to install it. Simply click on the download file and follow through the prompts. And it should only take a few seconds to install. Once it's installed, just open up Etcher and then drag the image that you've downloaded from the Hass.io website. Etcher will automatically identify the devices that it can write to. Select the micro SD card and click flash. Now the flashing will take some time, so I'll skip through the actual flashing. However, once it's complete, it will verify to check if there were any errors written to the card. For those who are wanting to use Wi-Fi, you will also need to create a folder on an MS-DOS FAT32 formatted USB memory stick called Network, and then create a text file in there called hasos-wi-fi. I've got an example up on the screen for the configuration that I'm using. I've taken out my Wi-Fi SSID and password, so make sure you replace that with your own network details. I've also specified a static IP address so that the Pi will boot each time on the same IP. Please make sure that the IP address is updated to be in line with your router. You could also remove this and configure it directly from your router. Some people have noted that editing and saving the file in Notepad is fine. However, others have commented that using a tool like Notepad++ and setting the encoding to ANSI and line ending to Unix before saving has been required. On the Raspberry Pi, insert the micro SD card and if you're planning to use Wi-Fi, plug in your USB memory stick, which has the Wi-Fi configuration file on it. If you also want to view the boot sequence for any errors or troubleshooting, you can plug in an HDMI cable and watch the Pi boot up. You will also need a sufficient power supply. As mentioned before, make sure it has sufficient power or you'll run into stability issues with Home Assistant. The boot sequence will load and it will take a while for Hasio to initialize as it connects to the internet and downloads and updates itself to the latest version. Once you've given it a bit of time to load up, you can connect to Hasio by accessing the static IP that you configured in the Wi-Fi config file. Or if your router supports MDNS, then the host name will be Hasio dot local port 8123. You may get a preparing has IO page. Just wait and refresh a couple of times until it's ready. The initial page will require you to enter in a username and password. Make sure you remember what this password is, as you will then be required to log in 
with the newly created username and password. Once you enter in the username and password, it will bring you into the Home Assistant overview page. So you can see that some of my lights have already been detected. The lights that I'm using are Yi lights. And because I have enabled the LAN mode on these devices, Home Assistant has been able to detect them. You can click through and change the brightness and colors. If you want to change the names, you can go through the customization section, just find the device, scroll through to the name, rename it, and then click save. And then if you go back to the overview page, you can see that the light name has changed. The first thing that you want to be able to do is to have a method to easily access the configuration files. These files are important if you want to add additional devices. You'll need to go through the HASIO link, click the add-on store and find the Samba share add-on. Once you find it, click on it and click install. Once it's installed, you will need to update the configuration. You'll need to add which network it's going to be shared on. Because I'm using Wi-Fi, I need to add in WLAN 0. However, if you're using an Ethernet cable, then you'll need to add in ETH 0. Then enter in a username and password, and update the allowed hosts to the IP range of the computer that will be accessing the shared folder. This should be aligned to the static IP that I specified for the Wi-Fi. Once you can complete, click Start. If you want to see if it's working, you can view the log at the bottom. And once it has been initialized, it will have the message waiting for connections. You should now be able to access the shared folder through Windows Explorer. What I normally do is map the network drive. So enter in the PI IP address and the config folder. Make sure you select to use different credentials and then enter in the username and password that you specified in the Samba config. Then if you access the directory, you should be able to see all the key configuration files in there. The key files to use are configuration.yaml this is the file that you will likely use the most to add in any additional components and configurations. You'll also have your automations file, which will be populated after you add in automations. You can edit the file directly, or you can add automations through the, the GUI. You also have your secrets.yaml file, which is used to store all your sensitive information, such as usernames, passwords, and API keys. Having it in this file will be an extra layer of defense in case your configuration file is exposed. You can also access the log, but the log is also accessible through the Home Assistant GUI. So that's the end of this guide, and you should now have a working Haseo build of Home Assistant. If you have any questions, suggestions, or requests, please feel free to post a comment or reach out to me directly. I've also got a number of other posts and videos for some of the automations and devices that I'm using. Thanks for watching.